This news is funded by viewers like you. Please support our work at democracynow.org slash give. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Israel is continuing to detain the head of Al Shifa Hospital, the largest hospital in Gaza. Last week, the Israeli military detained Mohammed Abu Salmiya as he was evacuating patients south from Gaza City. Israel raided Al Shifa, claiming Hamas ran a command and control center under the hospital, but Israel's yet to provide any horrid evidence to back that up. Former Israeli Prime Minister Ehud Barak recently spoke with CNN's Christian Amanpour, he admitted Israel built the bunkers decades ago underneath al-Shifa. It's already known for many years that they have in the bunkers that originally was built by Israeli constructors underneath Shifa, or were used as a command post uh, of the Hamas and a kind of a, a junction of several uh, several uh, tunnels, uh, part of the system. I don't know to say to what extent it is a major. It's probably not the the only uh, kind of command post. Several others are under other uh, hospitals or in other uh, sensitive places, but it's for sure had been used by uh, by uh, Hamas even during this uh, conflict. Well, when you say it was built by Israeli engineers, did you misspeak? <laughs> No, no, some, uh, you know, decades ago, we were uh, the, uh, running the place, so we held them. It was decades, many decades ago, probably five, de four decades ago, that we helped them to build these uh, bunkers in order to enable uh, more, more, uh, more space for the operation of the hospital within the very limited uh, size of this compound. Again, that was the former Israeli prime minister, Ehud Barak. We're joined now by Jeremy Scahill, senior reporter and correspondent at The Intercept, author of Blackwater, The Rise of the World's Most Powerful Mercenary Army and Dirty Wars, The World is a Battlefield. One of his most recent pieces for The Intercept is headlined, El Shifa Hospital, Hamas's Tunnels and Israeli Propaganda. Uh, Jeremy's joining us from Germany. Jeremy, um, can you talk about what he just said? Yeah, well, first of all, Amy, the, um, the Al-Shifa hospital, originally going back to the years of the British mandate um, in the 1940s, it was a British military barracks, and then it was converted into uh, a hospital and uh, under both the Israeli and the Egyptian occupations of that area. And then in the 1980s, the Israelis began to do extensive construction on it. In fact, I was looking um, at the Israeli architecture archives that were set up, and you can go back and look at uh, from that era, and two Tel Aviv uh, architects oversaw the the expansion of the Al Shifa Hospital. And by 1983, they had finished the construction of underground facilities at the hospital. Now, we should also say it's not uncommon for hospitals the world over to have underground facilities for a variety of reasons. Um, but when you're in an active war zone, it's very common. In fact, Israel um, has many underground facilities at its hospitals throughout Israel um, and has been using them um, since October 7th, certainly. Um, they're considered more secure places to hold vulnerable patients. Um, and so what we know about uh, Israel's construction is that they at least built um, an underground operating room. They built a network of tunnels. And in fact, during some of the construction, what, what the son of one of the Israeli architects who designed the underground facility said that when Israel was building these in the 1980s, they hired people from Hamas as security to guard the construction project um, so to ensure that it wouldn't get attacked. And Jeremy, could you talk also about the the uh, the thousands of, of prisoners that Israel has been holding, uh, many of them without any trial for uh, for extended years, and uh, yet the Netanyahu government uh, refers to all of them as terrorists. Yeah, I mean, Juan, I went through, and this connects also to the narrative around Al Shifa. But just to directly answer your question, Israel released a list of 300 names that it said were uh, fair game for uh, a hostage prisoner uh, handover uh, because of the truce with Hamas. And I went through all 15 pages of those names. I read uh, each of the individual dates of birth, the dates of arrest, what the nature of the charges were, if there were any charges. Some of them don't, don't even list any uh, actual charges against them. And what I discovered is that of the 300 names, 233 
uh, of these prisoners. Most of them are teenage boys. Some are te uh, there's a teenage girl who's 15 years old. Um, the 233 of 300 uh, have not been convicted of anything. They haven't been sentenced uh, for anything. And Israel is uh, the only country in the so-called developed world uh, that uh, tries children in military courts. And and so you know the Israeli narrative is that these are all hardened terrorists because. Palestinians are not allowed to have any context. Palestinians are, are, are not treated as full human beings. So when a child, uh, maybe his brother was killed by the Israeli forces, maybe his mother was killed by the Israeli forces, throws a rock at a, a, at a soldier, uh, their houses are often then raided at night, they're snatched, they're taken uh, to interrogation without the presence of a parent or a lawyer, and then they're pressured into pleading guilty under threat of spending years in a military judicial process. Now, I say this relates to al-Shifa, um, because uh, the colonial narrative always, and you can look at the British with the IRA, you can look at the position against Nelson Mandela and the African National Congress, is that those who are victims of the occupation have no rights to legitimate struggle. And so the, the, the prisoners that Israel are holding overwhelmingly are people that are accused of committing political acts of violence. And that context also bleeds into Israel's narrative about al-Shifa. Al-Shifa is not really a hospital. Al-Shifa, look, I don't know if you guys have the video, but if you do, you should play it. Israel puts out a video to justify the siege of al-Shifa hospital, the most important hospital in Gaza, where you had dozens of children uh, that needed incubators. Israel had knocked out the power supply. You had the most vulnerable uh, uh, patients there. They put out a video, the Israeli uh, Defense Forces, that is this high-tech, three-dimensional rendering, they said, of, of an underground, what, what I just call a Hamas pentagon. And they imply that this is where, this is the central facility where Hamas is planning its terror operations. Um, when Israel finally then lays full siege to it, with the backing of the Biden administration and Biden himself, they co-signed all of that. They said that hostages had been held under the hospital. They said that it was used as a command and control center. When Israel finally starts to access the hospital. They take embedded journalists on these propaganda tours. And what they found was essentially nothing of any major significance. They, they go in and they say, oh, look, we found these rifles um, behind an MRI machine, which is ridiculous for anyone who knows that <laughs> the technology of an MRI machine and the magnetism of it. Um, they, 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 they're all conveniently placed, neatly arranged. There's uh, uh, one Hamas vest with a Hamas logo on it. So that gets ridiculed and, and skepticism is expressed even by corporate media outlets that historically print Israel's propaganda as just established fact. So then they, they finally gain access to a tunnel in the area. Um, they go down there and they say, oh, this, this tunnel is X number of meters long, and there's a blast-proof door that has a hole so that the Hamas terrorists can fire at us. Um, so we need to take some time before we blow it open. And on the other side is going to be this command and control center. So finally then, last week, they blow the thing open. They go in there, and what do they find? They find um, three rooms, basically. One looks like a kind of very old school, 1980s style exam room from a hospital. There's a sink somewhere in there. There's two toilets. And then you have this utter clown from the IDF who has been made a fool of himself by doing these tours. It's like Geraldo Rivera looking for Al Capone's vault. He's running around saying, aha, there's electricity in here. This is a Hamas command center. Aha, they had an air conditioner in here. You know, the pipes are rusty. Many of the electrical wires aren't even connected. Now, I don't know for a fact that Hamas guys weren't under there. It wouldn't shock me if at some point Hamas did have people under there. But we were told this was like a Hamas Pentagon and that it was so dangerous that it justified laying siege to a hospital filled with the most vulnerable people. This is this is. Uh, this is akin to sort of the, the George H.W. Bush administration lies about the Iraqis uh, pulling babies from incubators. It's an utter lie that was co-signed and promoted by President Joe Biden and his, his administration, and they should be made to answer for this because it wasn't just al-Shifa. They did it at the Indonesia hospital. They did it at other hospitals. Of course, Hamas has networks of tunnels underneath Gaza, 150 to 300 kilometers by some estimates. Israel is waging a targeted assassination campaign against them, and they live in a confined area waging a guerrilla war. That's not news, but Israel tried to rebrand something that anyone who's followed this already knows and try to make it seem like it's a smoking gun. And in fact, it was a lethal lie. Jeremy Scale, who I want to thank you for being with us, senior reporter correspondent at The Intercept. We'll link to your pieces on al-Shifa and Palestinian prisoners at democracynow.org. Democracy Now! is funded by viewers like you. Please give today at democracynow.org slash give.